things. Got a quick question for you. Are you willing to rattle people's cages? What do I mean by that? Well, let me explain. I had an opportunity today to spend an hour in a car with a fantastic woman. Her name's Aim Livingston. She is an actress, a writer, and director. She's the director of the play that I've been promoting that's coming to my hometown of Cincinnati. It's called Last Out. It's the story about the Green Beret, and uh, it delves into the issues that returning soldiers and their families face. It's a terrific dive into what truly people go through. A lot of people look at soldiers and think, well, they just go over and their job is to kill people and start wars. That's not true. They have a job. And yes, unfortunately, that is part of their job. But they're emotional creatures like the rest of us. And they have to deal with a lot of these emotions that are suppressed to be soldiers. And when they come home, they have to deal with that. And the family has their own issues. So this play is great about giving insight into that. And I mention all that because AIM is the director of this play. And we were talking in the car, and she said, you know, Michael, my goal in, in directing this play was to rattle people's cages. I said, oh, I love that. And tell me what you mean specifically. She said, you know, if you go to a movie like Mamma Mia or The Hangover, you go there for entertainment, you go for a couple of hours, you escape life, and then when you leave and get home, you forget about it. She said, I want this play to be different. I want people to have a different perspective. I want it to disturb how they think about uh, traditional soldiers and their families and what they go through. You may not get lost for two hours in this play, but when you go home, I want you to think about it, not just that day, the next week, the next month, year, the rest of your life. I want it to change the way people feel about our soldiers and their families. And I love that because it, it, it basically mirrors a concept that I teach in speaking. And it's simply this. What is our job as speakers? Now, on one level, I believe our job is to give hope to other people. But a question that I often ask my clients and audiences is, do we want our audiences to feel comfortable when we're done speaking? And a knee-jerk reaction for people is often, yeah, I want them to feel comfortable. And I said, then you're not going to change their lives. It's not going to happen. A lot of speakers say they want to make a big change in the world. Well, how do you get people to change? You got to make them uncomfortable. You got to rattle their cages, as Aim Livingston would say. Now, when I ask people, are, are you comfortable with the idea that some people are not going to like you? Another knee-jerk reaction I hear is, yeah, I can deal with it. I challenge you. I'm going to ask you this question. If you're going to give a presentation and you want to change the way people think, feel, or act so that they have a better life, in your gut, can you truly accept if some people are going to be mad at you, upset with you, disturbed by what you say? It's not uncommon for people when they do some honest soul searching to say, eh, I don't know if I'm too comfortable with that. You got to get used to it. If you're going to be a speaker, if you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be a sales professional and you want people to change their behavior, you got to make them uncomfortable. It's as simple as that. People do not take action when they're too comfortable. So your challenge today is not to do this, but to ask yourself, can I truly be comfortable rattling people's cages? Because if you are willing to do that, then you have taken the first step to truly making a change in the world that you want to see happen. Good luck answering that question. Feel free to leave comments below. Look forward to seeing you in our next video.